Hallelujah. We thank God. We praise God for the children. The Bible says, let the little children come unto me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Out of the mouths of babes, he has perfected praise. Somebody say amen for the children. Let's give the God some glory for them. Let's thank God for them. It's not easy to stand before people when these children are doing what they're doing to the glory of God. They do it for the love of him. Well, let me get this thing started. <laughs> 2015 has been a very, very scary year. People have been killed in church during Bible study. Senseless mass murders by uh, radical religious people. Police gunning down and even in McKinney dragging our children in the streets. It's been a scary year. Same-sex marriage has been approved by the Supreme Court. The legalizing of marijuana in some states is making such huge strides, soon they hope it will be widely accepted. One poet said, Mother, Mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, Brother, there's too many of you dying. Well, if Marvin Gaye were around, I think he would revive his old lyrical question, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. You see, the world is asking the question, and the church has the answer. You see, the question is, what's going on? The answer is, sin can only be conquered by submitting to the Savior, Jesus Christ. What's going on? The world is crazy. What's going on? Sin can only be conquered by submitting to the Savior, Jesus Christ. This truth causes me to ask the question of myself. With so many churches filled with so many Christians, and yet the world is exploding with so much destruction, what is my purpose? What is my role? What role do I play in the solution of this madness? Hence, I titled today's message. It's on your bulletin. But let me pause it. Elder, put that up for me. Uh, what in the world am I supposed to do now not yesterday because I've lost that opportunity but what in the world am I I'm taking personal responsibility supposed to do now tomorrow is not promised what am I supposed to do now well before we dig in and seek the scriptures for an answer I want to pause and pray for just a moment. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I cannot do what needs to be done today. I cannot communicate, oh God, to the hearts of men and women, brothers and sisters in this house, what needs to be done, but you can. For Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And so all I'm saying, God, is here I am, use me. I'm not worthy but you are kind and gracious, and so have your way. Say what you once said, for you are glory, you, so that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. As bad as things are today, you all, as bad as things are, let me suggest that there was a day, there was a day when things may have been worse. Somebody say, what? Right, right, right. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 6 and look at verse 5, You'll find these words recorded there. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God chose to destroy all life by flooding the earth except Noah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
And when all the waters were receded, and he let all the animals out, and the ground was dry, the only people alive were Noah and his family. Can you get a grasp on this vast earth? All destruction occurred, everybody in the world killed, nobody is left alive, God destroyed all the evil wickedness, and only Noah and his family walk out of the boat saved from destruction. God established a covenant with mankind through Noah, and God gives a command, which I believe is the answer to today's sermon title Question. Let's read, uh, Elder, pull up nine, verse, Genesis chapter, verse 9, verse 7. Standing out, God talking to Moses, looking out, no one on the earth, only Noah and his family. You can hear Noah saying, what in the world am I supposed to do now? Genesis 9, 7 records these words. God speaking, and as for you, be fruitful and multiply bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. Noah's new assignment was to fill the earth with a godly presence, put a God signature out into the world. People who were saved from destruction, Noah's family, they were saved from destruction, were now tasked with the task to spread out and fill the world with God-fearing people. Are you tracking with me this morning? Uh, they were to populate the world with God's glory. This, my brothers and my sisters, is the purpose of all those who are saved. Let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, how fruity have you been this year? Yeah, yeah, I, I, Pastor, I think this is the only time we could talk to a brother and say, Brother, have you been fruity? You got to be in the right context to be able to say that. But how fruity have you? Be fruitful and multiply. Spread God's glory all over the earth. Have you been fruity this year? You see, the job of saved people is to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth with the glory of God. I want to now look at a New Testament lesson from Jesus given to his followers. It's a directive which affirms our purpose to be more fruity for God's glory. We're going to go to John chapter 15, verse 1. I want to let you know that this is probably be about three or four sermons that I've condensed into one sermon. So somebody right about now should be said, help him, Jesus. <laughs> John chapter 15, verse 1 Jesus speaking here, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. This is the seventh revelation of who Jesus is. He identifies to his disciples and followers that he is the great I am. You remember when Moses was uh, in before the burning bush, and he said, now, who should I tell Pharaoh, powerful Pharaoh, is sending me? And God said, tell him, I am that I am. When I am shows up, things happen. Jesus is now telling his followers seven times who he is. He's the bread, he's the door, he's the way. And in this passage, he said, I am the true vine. Get in touch with who I am. I'm the true vine. Jesus paints a picture of the believer's purpose by revealing who he is in order to know who you are so that you know what the world, what in the world you are supposed to do now. When you know who he is and you know who you are, then you know what you're supposed to do in the world. He describes himself as a fruit-producing vine and the father as the caring gardener. If you go to verse 2 of uh, chapter 15, Jesus continues, he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it might bear more fruit. I want you to watch this progression from fruit to more fruit to much fruit. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Your purpose is defined here. You are supposed to bear, not produce, fruit. You are the bearer of fruit. Jesus is the producer of fruit. Jesus is the vine producer. You are the branch presenter. 
In the passage, you will see that the father is expecting progression of fruit in abundance. The terms go from fruit to more fruit to much fruit, and there is to be no wasting of Jesus' resources. Either you are a branch that presents the produced fruit, or you get the boot. I'm just saying what the text is saying. In John chapter 15, verse 4, the next one, Jesus begins to help the, help the, help the, uh, the disciples to understand their, their destiny, their purpose in connecting with him, in remaining with him, in dwelling with him. He says in verse 4, he says, abide in me. We would say dwell. We would say remain. We would say hook up. We would say connect. Connect with me, abide with me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. It's essential, you all, to stay connected to Christ to successfully fulfill your purpose. You see, the grape branch bears luscious, juicy grapes when it is continuously draws its life-giving source from the vine trunk. If you break off the branch, it cannot bear life from the vine trunk, and there will be no fruit. If you want to bear good fruit, you must remain connected to the good root. Jesus Christ is saying, stay connected to me so that you can be all you can be for my glory. My brothers and sisters, I think it's time out for part-time Christianity. I'm pointing the finger at me. It's time out for Sunday only praise. I'm telling you, it's time in his house. It's easy to tell a sinner you must believe in Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, it's time out with all this destruction for just preaching the gospel in the house. There's a bigger world falling apart out there. Is there an example of fruit then? And there are several, and then I've given you a handout inside your bulletin, and I'm not going to be able to go through that. That's another sermon, but it's all in. There's a survey in there. I want you to go through the survey. I want you to uh, be realistic, and there's some practical application in there. Go ahead and spend some time with that later on, later on, later on. I see you getting your handouts. I said later on. But let me highlight a passage of scripture that the handout uh, highlights. Um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23 says this. But the fruit, what does it say? Yeah, yeah. But the fruit of the Spirit, listen to what it says, is love. The fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit is the one that's doing the production. He's producing in you what you cannot produce. Your job is to be a branch to bear. Your job is to hang it out for others. He's producing joy. The Spirit is producing peace. The Spirit is producing long-suffering, patience. He's producing kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Listen, who doesn't want to be around a person like that? Let me hang out with somebody who's loving, joyous, peaceful, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentle, and in self-care. Let me hang out with somebody like that. Because the opposite of these things, you want to run from that kind of person. Amen. Note that the word fruit in the passage is singular, not fruits, but fruit. This emphasizes that all nine characteristics should be present in the life of the believer. Show me a believer who yields to the Holy Spirit so he can produce all these attributes in their life, and I'll show you a person who is fulfilling their life mission to point lost people to the Savior, Jesus Christ. When you are spiritually fruitful, you multiply by spreading the good news to others. I don't know too about you, but I got to get more fruity. Anybody got to get more fruity? Need to be a little bit more fruity this year. No, no, I'm going to tell the truth. I need to be a lot more fruity this year. Amen. Let's get back to the passage in John chapter 15, verse 5. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides, remains, dwells, stays connected in me, and I in him bears what kind of fruit? 
much. You see, he's looking for multiplication. Be fruitful and multiply, not fruitful and add, not fruitful and subtract. He's looking for fruit that multiplies. He said, and bears much fruit. And listen, get in touch with this last part. For without me, you can do nothing. Let me share with you an insert that I got from the Life Application Bible where, you know, about 15.5. Uh, I think it's in your handout. It says, remaining in Christ means, one, believing that he is God's son. Two, receiving him as Savior and Lord. Three, doing what God says. Four, continuing to believe in the good news. And five, relating in love to the community of believers, Christ's body. It's a connection. It's a, it's a connection so you understand your direction. You won't know where to go if you don't stay connected to the vine. You've got to talk to the Lord. You've got to spend time with him, and then he will tell you where he wants you to go, what you are to be doing in the world now. Much fruit comes from abiding, remaining, dwelling in Christ. Not part-time commitment, but full-time commitment produces the fruit. Newsflash, you cannot fulfill your purpose without Christ. Listen, here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, uh, a comparison. You can't do nothing in John 15, but if in Philippians 4, 13, it said, you can do all things. Without, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. In Philippians 4, 13, he said, you can do all things. And so whatever the task God gives you, you can do because you're putting your trust in Christ to get it done. Let's move on now, looking at John chapter 15, verse uh, 6. It says, Jesus goes on and says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Well, this is not a passage that proves that you can lose your salvation. Those who say that they believe but do not bear fruit are suspect. Don't look at your neighbor, look within. Make sure you check in your own self. Listen to me, listen to me. Judas Iscariot, you got to know something about your Bible. You got to read your Bible. You got to dwell. You got to spend time on the Word of God. Judas Iscariot was a part of the 12 disciples that hung around Jesus on a regular basis. If, you, if, if those who are Bible scholars in the house and those who don't know, you could just confirm that by saying amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Judas was around the believers at all the time, yet he did not submit to the Father's will. He had an agenda all of his own. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, if you don't abide in me, you're going to get cast out. You're going to be like a branch that's going to get burnt up. Judas is a prime example of that for me. He was there when they were passing out the bread. He was there when, when Jesus was walking on the water. He was there when people was, uh, when eyes were being opened. He was there when lame people were raised back. Judas was right there all the time. Some may come to church. I feel like preaching, but I'm going to be careful up in here. So, so, so some may come to church. Some may give money in the church. Some may even go on the outreach outings of the church. But if you do not fully believe and receive all, I said A-L-L, -L, that Jesus preached, you are not a, a possessor of God's grace. You are a pretender. You can do all the church activities, you sing in the choir, pass out the, the, the program, work in various parts, but if you say, I believe this about Jesus, but when Jesus said this about himself, I don't, you are a, you are a pretender. All right. All right. Judas was a pretender. He was looking for his will to be done, not his will to be done. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, he had just said prior to this uh, conversation here, he said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Those persons will always be connected to Christ. Those who put their trust in Jesus, who believe all that he says he is, will always be with Christ. But those who think that their ideas and their agendas are better than Jesus, you will burn in hell. Thus saith the word of God. Well, let's keep on moving on because y'all can't handle too much of that stuff, fire and brimstone stuff. John chapter 15, verse 7. I'm, I'm, I'm rounding down to the end. John 15, verse 7, close to the end, so don't get excited, close to the end. 
uh, says this. Jesus said, if you abide, dwell, remain, reside, stay connected, hang out with, hook up with. Yeah. If you abide, what? In me. Are you tracking? And listen to what he says. And my words abide where? In you. Listen to what he does. He said, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Woo! I'm talking about a promise of all promises. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Can I tell you something? There's some fake branches. I said some fake branches. There's some fake branches of the vine that try to use this passage as a proof that you can name and claim anything you want. Want a Gucci bag? Name and claim it. Want an iPhone 6 Plus? Name and claim it. You want you a six foot tall, dark, handsome, uh, Name and acclaim. But I want you to remember what Jesus, listen to, listen to me, you got you to know the whole counsel of the word of God. It wasn't just this passage he taught the disciples, because back in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus taught those disciples that when you're praying, you pray like this, his kingdom come, his will be done. In the Garden of Gethsemane, a few days later, he's going to be in the garden saying, God, if it's Father, if it's your will, let the cup pass by me. But look what he says at the end. He said, but nevertheless, not what I want, but what Amen. you want. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Can I tell you the secret of how to get the answer yes every time you pray this prayer? Can I tell you that? Yeah, okay. The answer to prayer will always be yes when it is requested in accordance with the Father's will. Can I give you an illustration? Elder, put, put, put up a, a picture of my little dude. My little dude cat. Put, that's my boy right there. That's my dude cat. That's my dude cat. Let me tell you, let me tell you about him. That's Adrian. Uh, Adrian's three years old, and Adrian understands this principle of getting yes, 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 when he makes the right request. He knows how to get his grandfather to say yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. First, he recognizes that Papa, listen to me now, I don't know about your house, I'm talking about as for me and my house. He recognizes that Papa is the chief authority in the house in McKinney. Oh, look, look, I was waiting for brothers to give me some, you know, come on now. Come on, don't be afraid, you, God's got your back. I said he recognized that Papa is the chief authority. And Carla, can I get an amen? That's what I'm saying. You hear what I'm saying to you? We ain't even rehearsed that. <laughs> he recognized that Papa's the chief authority. And look, he, we even got a song. We even got a song that tells about, let me, let me share some lyrics with you. Uh, uh, when, when me and Adrian go around and we see each other, and you know, uh, that's why I got my gear on because I'm thinking about him, you know, and, 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 then, and when we want to talk about uh, who's, who's, in a, who's in charge in, in, in McKinney, in the house in McKinney, you know what he said? Adrian go around and said, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. If you don't know, you better. Who the big dog is? It's you, big papa. You, big papa. <laughs> Who the big dog is? It's you, big papa. You, he, get, he get that thing, he's dancing, he be getting this thing going on. Don't be mad at you, that's our song. Don't be mad at me. Make up yours, that's our. How does this relate to getting what he wants? He knows that the big dog is a provider. He knows that the big dog is a protector. He knows that the big dog is a permission granter. I have spent time, and so what he knows is, the more he spends time with the big dog and gets to understand Papa's heart and what Papa likes, he understands how to get the answer yes, because he knows what Papa likes. I spent ample time with him. He spent ample time. We've been abiding. We've been dwelling. We've been connecting so that he knows what I like. Let me give you an example. For instance, when he asks... Papa, can, can, can we watch a movie on your iPad? 
we go over and sit down in the big dog chair. Listen, only the big dog and the little dog get in that chair. The queen of the castle can get in there because she can do anything she want. But everybody else, that's big dog, little dog chair. We get over in the big dog chair, and I let him hold the iPad, and he gets to scrolling through the movie choices. And we've done this so much uh, that I can hear him whispering to himself, no, no, Papa don't like dragon movies. He going, he's swiping, he going, no, no, Papa don't like movies about witches. And he's scrolling, he's going, he's going. He said, he said, no, no, Papa, he don't like scary movies. And then he'll come across Sesame Street or Veggie Tales. And then, then he'll say, they say, Papa, can we watch this one? Can we watch it? And he knows the answer is going to be yes. He knows it. He knows I'm going to grant him permission to give him something that helps him be better so that he can help others be better around him in the world. I'm only going to say yes that make him a... You see, I want him to be fruitful so he gets a yes when he asks for the things that his grandfather likes. Eugene Peterson renders John 15, 7 from the message this way. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home with you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. Folks, ask for what God likes and you'll get yes. Amen. You get a yes from God when you ask for the things that he likes. You'll be better when you ask for those things that make you a better person, to be a better blessing that makes God look good. It's where I want to end up on verse 8, John chapter 8, talking about how we can make God look good. I love that Pastor Rice gives us phrases that helps us to remember uh, uh, Bible, Bible terms in, in, in the Scripture. And, and so when, when Pastor says, listen, how do, you, how do you give God glory? You make him famous. You make him known. You make him popular. You make him famous, right? You make God known. And so look at John chapter 8, uh, 15 verse 8, where it says, by this, my Father is glorified, Jesus is speaking. How? That you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. If you're a believer in Christ and you're not bearing fruit, you better get a little closer to the root. I asked my wife on the way up, I said, baby, can you tell me, when we get, feel like we're a little distant and disconnected, uh, what, what does it take for us to get back close, oozy goozy and all of that all over again? What does it take to, she said, listen, it starts with conversation, Terry. First, you got to start talking to me before you try to touch me. Can I preach in the house? All I'm saying is, if you ain't been on your knees, if you ain't been talking to Jesus, if you ain't been connected, don't be going and say, give me, give me, give me, God. If you ain't spent some time saying, I praise you, praise you, praise you, God. All I'm saying is if you want to get close, you want to get connected, you got to spend some time with the Savior. Well, listen to me. Glorifying the Father is the purpose for, for the believer's existence. You need to bear fruit, and his glory is presented all over this world. Folks, we've got to get more fruity for God's glory. We've got to get the signature of God out in this mad, crazy world by you being more fruitful everywhere you go. One thing I know about Adrian one thing I know about Adrian is that once you teach him something, he's got it in his heart. It's a part of him forever. Yeah, one day he was passing Elder Kevin Scroggins' office, and Pastor Rice was in there talking with him, and he loves those two men. You know, we, Pastor, Pastor and Kevin, he talks about you at home. He loves y'all. He loves y'all, right? And, and, and so uh, they were talking in his office, and uh, uh, he loves those guys. So he just barged right on because he thinks he's one of their boys. To him, to him, that's his, y'all his boy. He's my boy. I'm going in. Boom, busting in on Kevin's office. He wanted to say hello. And you know what I love about Pastor and Kevin? They were dealing with some very serious church matters, but they took some time to spend some life and build life into this little boy. They took some time. They, they spoke words of love to him and wisdom to him. They told him how to look a man in the eye and shake your hand just right and stand up. Man, they were speaking. With, that boy was on a high because he was being taught by those who loved him. You know what? I, I, he doesn't forget that kind of stuff. And as he turned to leave, Elder Scroggins did a very curious thing. And I, I was kind of glad he did it. He turned to Adrian and said, Adrian. Adrian turned around and said, huh? He said, who the big dog is? Adrian looked up. He said, Papa. <laughs> to which I affirmed, that's right, boy. <laughs> you see, 
it seems to be Adrian's mission to go around singing our song and making his papa known. At school, when he's in a little preschool, he telling them a little kid, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. When he's in the church, here in North, and he loves Northeast Bible Church. When he's in the church and, 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 and he's in the fellowship and he's telling the fellowship worker, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. When his auntie is babysitting him in our house and Carl and I are not at home and they might want to get to the big dog chair, he like, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. <laughs> you know what he's doing? He's making his papa famous. He's telling everybody, everywhere he go, who the big dog is. It's almost like his mission, his purpose for existence, to tell everybody who his big dog is. If a little boy, can I preach up in here today? If a little boy can love a grandfather who's limited in his resources, limited in his love, imperfections and, and such, how much more? Should a branch of the true vine promote his love, his grace, and sing loud and strong, his mercy endures forever? If little Adrian could talk about his grandfather everywhere he goes, how much more should the Christian who's been saved from his sin, who's been rescued from destruction, how much more should that branch tell wide and long and how high and to the highest passion who their God is? Make your God know you glorify him by being fruity. Tap your way. Listen, y'all been tapping neighbors all year long. Y'all tired of tapping, smacking, and all that kind of But one last time, tap your neighbor and say, get more fruity, get more fruity. Got to get more fruity. Let me get ready to go. Let me get ready to go. For real this time, let me get ready to go. John chapter 15, verse 8 says this. By this, my Father is glorified that you may bear much fruit. And I've given you the handout how you can do some of that. So will you be my disciples. The world will know that you're a follower of Jesus Christ by the love you show for one another. Got to get more fruity in 2016. I don't know about you, but that's my, my commitment. I want to be much more fruity in 2016 for the glory of God. Listen to me. Yo, yeah, put up that, that picture of a little dude. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. He got the sad game and everything. He don't got the sad game because he's trying to be a rapper. He got the sad game because he ain't got much, you know. That's, that's him on Easter Fun Fest. Is he happy or what? That dude is excited about Easter Fun Fest that we do here. Listen, listen. I don't know about you, but I've got to get more fruity for God's glory. I would never insult, get your hand out, get your hand out. out. I would never insult our righteous, glorious Savior by calling him a big dog. I would never do that. I would never do that, right? So, I, so, so on the road, when y'all was praying for me and Carl and my mama coming back from Atlanta and on Indianapolis and Youngstown and Dayton and all that, I rewrote the lyrics. I rewrote the lyrics, yeah, yeah. I, I, I rewrote them just for you, for this message. I'm going to put that tune in your head so we can help make God known. Are you with me? Are you tracking with me? Listen, listen, listen. Say these words. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Say it again. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. That's what Adrian said. You better ask somebody. He get into that thing. Listen. Who the good God is, is you, King Jesus. You, King Jesus. Who the good God is, is you, King Jesus. Forgiver of sin, lover of men. Who the good God is, is you, King Jesus. You, King Jesus. Who the good God is, is you, King Jesus. Forgiver of sin, you're the lover of men. Who the, who the, who the, who the, who the good God is, is you, King Jesus. If you don't know, if you don't know, who the good God is, it's you, King Jesus. You, King Jesus, who the good God is, you, King Jesus. Forgiver of sin, you the lover of me, who the good God is. You, King Jesus, you, King Jesus, you, King Jesus. If you don't know, I said, if you don't know, who the true vine is, it's you, sweet Savior. Paid the price to be the source of life, who the good God is.
You better ask somebody. You know that on New Year's Eve, y'all used to be. I didn't say, Pastor, we're going to be in church on New Year's Eve. You know on New Year's Eve, y'all used to be somewhere doing this. You know it. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Stand up. Put your hands up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Put your hands up. Who the good God is? It's you, King Jesus. You, King. Who the good God is? Who the good God is? If you don't know, you better ask somebody. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Who the good God is? 